Hello everybody, what's going on out there today? I hope you're all doing well, I'm doing well. It's a really beautiful day out here today and I'm going to get this tutorial done and I'm going to head outside for a little while and maybe I should suggest you guys do the same. It's a wonderful day. Okay, but uh, we'll talk more about the day later. Let's go ahead and get into this little tutorial and this is a really good tutorial that I, I learned from the side effects website and it's about turning points or particles into surface geometry and or to put it lightly you could make a roll of toilet paper or a, a sheet of paper unrolling out or whatever you want to do but you can make your determination on what you want to use it for after we complete the tutorial so the first thing we're going to do is go to our create shelf and control click a grid the mighty mighty grid you know where would we be without the mighty mighty grid the mighty grid and the mighty box all ye <laughs> have faith in the mighty grid and the mighty box so now we have our grid object down let's get that up here and throw that out of the way and we can even turn off our work plane now let's go ahead and hit the tab key and let's bring in a generic geometry node by starting to type geometry and there we go there's our geometry node it lays down our generic box there let's double click to go inside of our generic node and if you can't see the file node hit the L key there it is let's box select that sucker and booyah get out of my life for good buddy and we'll get rid of that there file node okay so if we get rid of that file node that means we got to replace it with our own node or it's not going to do us much good so we're going to use our own node and this is a node you might not have used too many times before and it's called add so let's hit the tab key and start typing add and there's our add node okay let's lay it down fairly simple to set up just go up here under the points check check your checkbox and that's that okay and that'll lay a point down. It puts it at the origin. You can't really see it. If you turn on your point numbers, you can see right there, zero. Okay. Okay, now that we got that down, let's go ahead and lay down a transform. The mighty transform, you know? where <laughs> That's one of my most used nodes ever, is the transform node. So we'll take our transform node, and let's take this little point that we made with our add node. And let's take it back. Like so. And we'll take it up. I don't know about right there. It looks pretty good to me. There's no magic number. Okay. So now that we got that, we need to get into the particle portion of this tutorial. So we're going to come down here and we're going to tab in a pop net. So start typing pop and you'll see pop network. Lay down your pop network. Okay. And when you do that, nothing really happens, but that's okay because we haven't finished setting it up yet. So the first thing we're going to do is double click that pop net and let's go right down inside that mama. And boom, when we go down inside there, you'll see, hey, even if you hit the L key, there's nothing here. Where'd all my friends go? Well, that's we haven't made any friends yet. That's why there's nobody here. So let's go ahead and make a few friends, and let's plop down a source node. So hit the tab key and start typing source. This is going to be the node that sources our particles. And boom, there we go. So now let's go up here to our geometry source, and we'll say used first context geometry. And what that means is, there it is. There's my little point. And the first context geometry is, if I go back up a level, in my pop net here, it's the first input. Using the second context geometry would be my second input, okay? So I have my source node here. I have it using the first context geometry. Let's go to our birth. And let's make the constant birth rate about 2. Down from 100. We'll go to our attributes tab. And under initial velocity, we're going to say set initial velocity because we're going to set our own velocity. We're coming to the Z and let's make it 3. Then we're going to go to the variance tab. And we're going to put 0 in all three variants, X, Y, and Zs, just to get rid of any variance there. Okay. Now let's see what we got here. As you can see, we have some points coming across the top there. Woohoo! We got some action going on. So let's go ahead and, and do a few things to this. Let's add some forces to these particles. The first thing we're going to add is gravity. You know, and, and gravity is the mother of all forces. So we have our source node selected. Let's go up here to our drive particle shelf and select gravity. And that's going to go ahead and put a gravity node on there. You'll see we have a force of negative 9 in the Y. Let's change that to negative 5. Okay. Because that was just a little bit much, you know. Minus 9 is supposed to be the accurate or fairly accurate representation of real gravity. 
but you know it was a little bit strong in this case so now we want let's go back and play this we can see our particles will fall down and nothing's happening so we want them to interact with our grid there so let's go ahead and add a collision node so under the drive particle shift we'll say collision it's going to automatically bring us up to object level because it's smart enough to do that and let's select our grid that we laid down and hit return that'll bring us back into our pop net but as you can see now the collision node is now set up so we're going to add one more force to this it's going to be drag let's add a drag node and let's come up here to our scale and let's lower the scale to 0 0.05 okay let's now sometimes it won't update for you when you push play. You'll be like, what's going on? Why ain't it working? But you'll need to rewind it. Go all the way back to frame one, and then it will update, okay? Sometimes it won't kick in, and you'll have to rewind it to get the established changes to, to show up in the viewport, okay? So let's rewind it. Hit play. You'll see what we got here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, we got... A nice little stream of particles and they're bouncing on our grid there. Okay, good job. Now I think we're done inside of our pop net. So we can go back up a level. So let's go on back up a level here. Uh -huh, which will be right here where our pop net is. Okay. So now after our pop net, let's go ahead and add another add node. Okay, so we'll right click there. Type add lay it down this is going to be easy to set up too just go to your polygons tab and select by group and boom look at there now when I go back and play this isn't that impressive okay now that's a little rough so let's go in and add a convert node just start, start typing convert after a type or hitting tab let's lay a convert node down and we're going to convert it from polygon to NURBS curve. And that's really gonna smooth that bad boy up here. Let's play it. You can see now it's really smooth, okay? You have to excuse the performance. I have screen craps are going here, so. Okay, now we have that laid down. We're still a few more things we can do. Let's go ahead and lay down a transform node. Okay, now let's take this transform node. Command C to copy it. Command V to paste it. Now you can see we have two transform nodes coming out. Let's select and highlight the display flag for this transform here. And let's push it back this way. Okay. Now let's select the display flag and the uh, node for this transform node. And we'll move it back this way. Like that. Now, if I scroll forward in the timeline, you'll see that this one is here, and this one is here. If I template one of them and display the other, you'll see where I've moved them to, just on either side of the grid. Okay? So as you can see, we took that one curve, that one point, this one particle stream, and split it into two, just by using two transform nodes. And this is the beauty of Houdini. So now let's go ahead, we can untemplate that. Let's merge these together by bringing in a merge node. Merge, merge, merge. Everybody used to get used to the merge node, people, because the merge node is going to be your one of your best friends. So let's plug in our transform modes into our merge, and you need to do that and highlight the merge, display its display flag. You'll see we have both curves kicking, and when I play, they take off like a rodeo. Woohoo! Let's go, boys. And there we go. We got two, okay? So now we just got one more thing to do. Let's skin between these two curves, okay? So let's go ahead and tab in a skin node. Okay, now we're going to need to tell it. It's usually when you use the shelf and you use the skin node, it's, it asks, okay, select your U cross sections. Hit enter, and then select your V curves, and hit enter. You know, it'll say, select your cross sections, and you select it, and you hit enter, and it'll say, select your V curve. And if you don't have any V curves, you leave it blank. So we had to go in here, 
And through trial and error, thankfully, on somebody else's behalf, at side effects, the correct parameters to put in here are 1 and 3. And hit return. And boom, look at there, that skins those two right together. Let's go back up to object level now, rewind it, and let's play. And here it's coming in, you can see. Let's let it play through once or twice so you can get a good idea of what's going on with it here. As you can see, it's coming in and it looks really marvelous. And it's going to, where it went off the grid now, there's no grid to bounce on, it's going to just keep falling down. And this, the heck, this could be a, uh, a track, a piece of paper unrolling from a newspaper printer. I mean, it could be anything a track on a tank if you wanted to, well it's up to you i don't know about a track on a tank but uh i think you can you can just about see the, the thousands and just about millions of uses you could use for this one technique of turning your particles into surface geometry so that's what we've done we've made a particle stream then we've took our particle stream converted that particle stream into surface geometry and we've done it fairly quickly fairly smoothly and this is one of the reasons I love Houdini. It just excels at stuff like this. And if anybody is a nice and good Maya user, please, 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 I would love for somebody to show me how to do some of these things in Maya. Okay, with the particles that I made exploding into boxes in this one. I'd love to see how it's done in Maya, different system. Now, I'm not saying Houdini's better or worse. I'm not saying Houdini's better or worse. But I would just like to see these techniques done in other packages just for my own educational benefit. So thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you guys have learned something in this tutorial, as I hope you learned something in all of them. Happy modeling. See you next time.